I'm about to replace the heater core in this S60. Uh, I know there's already at least uh, two other videos showing this. Uh, I will just do something different that may help removing the heater core from under the dashboard a little bit easier. I will just show this in the video. But first, uh, first of all, this applies to 2001, 2009 old Volvo models. I believe the X90 it's easier to pull from there, but for all others there are a bit of uh, a little bit of tricks. So the main issue why I'm doing this, uh, the heater core is not leaking. You may if you look on the underneath the car, sometimes if you have a uh, model from maybe 2000, 2001, 2002, the older one, you may find a little bit of leak here. It's not a problem. It's just the seals above that will start leaking a little bit but the heater core itself it won't leak normally on this uh, after 2001 models however the issue i have is that i have replaced my thermostat with a volvo one i have the right coolant the water pump fun function works well uh, the coolant is burped there's no air trap inside anywhere however i still find my heating my heat through the air vents is not the best it's not terrible but it's not the best also i've checked the ccm flaps to be working properly uh, so for this reason i'm thinking the heater core might be broken inside without leaking just inside it has separating walls and the fluid mass pass through all the all the duct inside so if the walls are broken inside cracked the fluid won't circulate properly and will remain at a lower level inside the heater core and those uh, the uh, heat, heat uh, transfer through the fins metal fins won't be enough good enough uh, also and i'm finishing with this uh, introduction i've noticed when i drive the car if i'm uh, uh, taking to the left or to the right i'm just changing direction uh, I will notice there is more hot air coming out, so the air gets hotter, which leads me to think that the level of the coolant inside the Hira core is not up to the top. So this is the reason I'm trying to replace it. So starting with the procedure, the first thing you have to do this, you have to put, uh, you have to set your heat here on both sides so this has two uh, separate heating you have to set them to the right completely at the hot level both of them make sure you get a key in contact so this has to be set to the right the reason for this is very important is because you have some uh, arms here that will move and with clear the passage of the hero core if you don't put those things on the right there will be an arm in, uh, on the way and you may broke those arms it's right there above so be sure to do that first it doesn't matter the other settings just the heat turn it to the max then another thing quite important grab a big big plastic sack the garbage types make sure it's not uh it's not it doesn't have any hole blow uh, blow some air make sure it's really tight because it's gonna we're gonna have coolant leak in there and you buy uh, you you really don't want coolant to leak on the carpet it smells uh so you don't want that right so you need to remove probably seen on the other videos to need to remove this side cream Grab a coin like this, insect it. One sec. You need to insert it uh, somewhere like this. Twist it. And then just pull this backwards like that. Or just sit. So it's gonna be free. And then you need then you need to remove this uh, plastic trim that's already gone for me, so it has to tore screw. Um, but the most important is this clip here 
it's just a clip it's inserted but don't pull on the plastic just pull on this side of it and go slowly and be careful not to break it uh, just uh, take it in with your time next thing which i didn't see in other videos is to adjust the steering wheel it will clear a little bit more space when you remove the heater course just to release the lever and it doesn't matter if the uh, steering gets pushed or pull it all the way that's that won't change anything that doesn't matter but what matters is to have it at the lower position so if you keep it like that lower it lower it the most you can just like that and uh, lock it back if you want i will show you what's the difference is that when you remove the thing from there you have to clear a couple of things here but one of them is this piece which is steering column piece and see when you give my camera steady when i lower the steering wheel that thing moves a little bit it's really not much but it helps when you pull the hero car from there is just a little bit you you just uh, gain a little bit more millimeters but it's good so it helps next thing you need to remove and this is i didn't see it in the other videos you need to remove this uh securing uh a bolt from the steering column and by the way this is the bolt that you want to remove when you check the lower coupler coupler which uh, oftentimes gets seized so if you remove this thing you remove the bolt for the coupler and it, then you can just swing this lower lower uh, shaft here and uh, you will see if the coupler is safe okay. but for now just remove this bolt uh, keep it safe it's a special bolt uh, you want to put it back in place the same way uh, with the nut on the side uh, pay attention to this thing because i think it's something for safety in case of crash uh, so yeah don't over tighten it and just remove it from there with the uh, bolt removed you want to maybe not now but just later on i just want to swing this upwards like this and you can see there's so much place you can uh, make now uh, to pass the uh, heater core so that's one one important thing uh, just uh, really a side note if you want to check the lower coupler you need to undo this thing uh, you need to check this bearing here it will usually will start rusting and you need to see if this moves freely but for now just uh, toes the steering column upwards next thing the one that people found the most uh, perhaps annoying is this brake switch which needs to be removed from the bracket entirely not not just disconnected but the whole thing needs to come out and actually is really easily uh, just uh, hold a second i'll just position my camera here's how this switch works and please uh, watch this section of the video because it's important as for the safety of the car and it's a bit tricky with this thing it needs to be adjusted when you place it back in car and also when you remove it the way it goes is that first of all you have this sleeve and you notice at this point uh, the tabs that secure it to the bracket metal bracket above the pedal are this one here you can depress it and this one one it's on the top one it's at the bottom and you notice at this point the sleeve here it's so retracted there is no problem depressing those tabs when you are first trying to remove it the sleeve here will be in a more or less closed position and it stops it prevents yeah sure it prevents those uh, those tabs from depressing and being clipped in the bracket if you pull on it it won't do anything if you force and keep forcing you will just break those little tabs and when the yeah i'm sure you understand and when those little tabs are broken uh the 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 switch won't stay uh won't stay won't keep staying in position when you put it back in place so you have to throw it away and get a new one uh, you cannot just uh, leave the switch there if the bra uh, if those tabs are broken and they will broke because the bracket around its metal the metal won't won't bend a little bit to let them out so it will break don't uh, don't uh, 
uh, take any chance. So you'll need a new switch. Maybe you can get one from uh, breakers for a scrapyard if you need. So this is why it's really important to have when you remove it first to have this jacket, this sleeve fully, fully retracted. Now it's tricky. Let me show you why. Um, the whole this thing works. It has two adjustments. Uh, actually, it has just one adjustment, but let's just say, say this sits inside the car and there's a bracket around here. It's uh, properly secured. This switch will be always push it like this when you don't brake. So the brake pedal always stays against the, the, the pin, against the switch. This is how it was. When you depress the pedal, it will release it and that's the on position. The lights at the rear of the car will go off. So now you, are, you have the braking lights uh, on, right? And then you release the pedal, it pushes back here and the lights at the rear car uh, shut, just uh, shut off, no lights. Uh, this, this, is one, this is how it goes with the pedal, but there is one more thing with this switch, with this whole unit, is that uh, in the car, when the pedal is released in this position, not all pedals are at the same position. So actually for that, this little this little part here needs to be adjustable so you will have perhaps a, a, a pedal brakes that sits lower when you don't when you don't push on it it sits lower and at that point this switch must adjust because it will stay open so for that this is how it works you look at this part of the switch and actually this part will extend and when it ex when it when it extends this the size here will change So you see, this is, uh, this is a position when this is uh, longer here, and now the switch got much shorter. So on each car, this is going to be different. This part will be different on your car. This is very, very important because you have to put this, uh, this extension here. When you put back the switch, it should be at the same place. You really need to check the switch it's working properly when you put it back together but when you first remove it if it sits like this let's just say it sits like this inside the car you have the bracket here you see the sleeve won't fully retract you cannot undo the tabs at this point by any means so actually what you have to do when this thing is in the car first you may disconnect it push this thing I'll, uh, actually sorry depress the brake pedal keep it depressed with one hand it's a bit tricky but you can do it with two hands keep the pedal depressed the most you can make a gap here and then with the other hand push this thing uh, just me let me show the sleeve will stay like this with the other hand push this thing all the way back just like that okay it's still secured in the bracket at this point then you grab the sleeve here the pedal is still depressed grab the sleeve and pull it all the way out you should see this gap here if you don't see it you won't be able to depress the tap and while keeping the pedal depressed just swing this thing be careful not to damage the switch swing it on one side it will pop up really easily okay and then you release the pedal when you push put it back in place also very important don't don't uh, don't make mistakes on this when you put it back in place let's say this is oh no actually you you close it sorry sorry you you are you have it closed like this when you put it back in place put it back in place exactly like this so grab it uh, don't attach the connector yet get it inside the bracket here it will clip because the sleeve is released and uh okay so when you when you put it back in the in the in the bracket keep the pedal depressed as much as you can depress it fully and then insert the thing in this exact position this is close this is fully extended so keep the pedal depressed make as much space here possible and then push this thing into the bracket to lock the uh, those tabs 
and then when you release the pedal you will notice two things first the sleeve will retract but also this thing will extend and the switch here will also retract so let's say this is the pedal when you got this thing clip it in place you will see that when you release the pedal it will do something like this more or less and at that point it should be secured in place this is you will leave this like this uh, you will leave it like this don't touch this and this this uh, switch should be at that moment self can i talk please <laughs> uh, this switch should be self adjusted to the pedal to be in the uh, closed position hopefully i'm clear enough uh so then you just attach the connector here so you don't touch to this it will stay like that inside the car okay just make sure uh, uh by all means test your brakes uh, so depress the pedal see if the lights lights go off at the rear of the car release the pedal see if the lights shut off at the rear of the car right so this will be probably the uh, position of your pedal in the car so it should stay like this when the pedal is not depressed and you should, with a small depression of the pedal, a little travel, you should see this switch releasing and not touching the pedal. Okay, so this is how it was. Think about it a little bit. I, hopefully I, I did explain uh, uh, more or less clearly. And also when you leave it inside the car, make sure the sleeve here is fully retracted. It should be, but it depends on the length. Let's say if your pedal sits like this, make sure this thing is fully retracted like that. Okay, sorry about the length, it's about 10 minutes explaining, but uh, it's an important part, it's really safe. And uh, again, I repeat myself, if you break it here, replace the switch right away, it won't stay there, it's not safe. Good luck. Final, final word, with the risk of repeating myself, when you remove it from the bracket, do not leave the connector here, because it will drain the battery, the light will stay on at the rear of the car. And you may want actually to disconnect the whole car battery. So I'm not sure if it gives an SIS message or not, but uh, don't take a chance, disconnect the car battery. Which is out. Don't forget to disconnect the electric car connector because when the switch is released like this, it's like the brake pedal is depressed. So for the car, it thinks you are applying the brakes, so you will have the lights of the rear of the car will be on, the brake lights. So disconnect it so you don't drain your battery. By the way, I don't know if this will trigger an SRS message if you undo it from uh, the connector. Uh, if you are afraid it could do it, just disconnect the car battery altogether. It is time to remove the coolant, just place something in, something to catch it. Um, uh, loosen a little bit the cap. And the, uh, the coolant cock is just, is just behind the uh, engine shield, this is non-turbo. But you can feel it with your hand, I will pick a, a, put a picture from underneath to see it clearly takes a 30 millimeter range uh, the ratchet won't won't go there because it's like it needs a deep unless you have a deep socket um, if you get a range if you don't uh, have enough power to loosen it just hack the range I'm not sure you know this but uh, just grab it like this with a second range and uh, Force, force it open, right? Mine is already not too, too tight in there. And uh, actually, if you if you just uh, you don't need to really really uh, open it wide or remove anything from there, just until it starts flowing. And uh, if you let it flow, you will catch most of the coolant probably one spill, and you can can filter it, you can even reuse it, if it's uh, fresh. Um, it will take about 5 minutes to drain, uh, 
to drain the block you still have uh, still uh, quite a bit of coolant when you remove the the here core but uh, this is the most you can do actually so I let it drain now bleeder right here place the 30 millimeters just underneath the manifold and you just pass, pass your hand by there and fill it so it's right here and it's gonna drop on the, under the car so the coolant has finished uh, draining so I'm just closing it don't forget to close it it's better to do it at this point uh, don't need to tighten like crazy it's just uh, it's the kind of self-sealing thing so you don't it doesn't matter if it's uh, it, it just needs to be uh, pushed back in floor cover this is a big the garbage bag and I did slide it underneath everywhere and also I got it under the, the, the pedals as far as I can because um, when you remove it it will uh, leak but then even though uh, we, even when you almost removed it from there it's gonna get stuck a little bit it's, it will keep leaking so make sure everything is tight everything it's covering everything uh, all the floor so now uh, going for those uh, oh yeah sorry first there's a tiny tor screw right there need to undo this guy it's a standard one show the size it's the only one don't forget to put it back I'm finished um, and then I will actually to remove those two clips on the pipes just put this on the side to remove those uh, clips actually what I use is I grab actually my uh, Torx uh, screwdriver but you can use any Phillips not a flat one a Phillips one the tip of Phillips will slide in that hook which is on the clip and uh, you notice the clips are opening or it needs to be removed towards the rear of the car and at one point there is like a uh, screw for something else right in the way so you just cannot pull them like this or push them like that but even more so if you just grab them with a screwdriver and with your hand you just try to slide them like this it's almost impossible it, they are really I mean they are not tight but it's just not uh, you don't have enough force for that so instead of this I will just I will just let's see with a small one I will just grab the air and I will just bend it like this I will make uh, uh, pu push uh, with the screwdriver on something else and I will just force it bent towards the left side of the car each of them let's try this I have to hold the camera with a with one hand so I'm just uh, inserted in the air and then you see I just push it against the pipe and it will bend towards me actually don't force too much because that's plastic around and it's already gone I will just remove this pipe the lower one and uh, then I will keep uh, removing the clip on the upper one it's not gonna work otherwise let me just stop a bit so uh, the first clip is gone I'll just uh, um, try to uh, put a lever in between the two hoses just like that and just don't 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 just pull on this one it's sometimes hot won't come up that easily so just try to give it kicks like this a little bit and it should come out And then I'll try to grab the other clip. 
Actually, you see, there's really not much uh, coolant cool, uh, leaking from there. So I guess uh, draining the draining the block it's uh, pretty much uh, the best option. Okay, let's just grab the other guy. It's uh, not exactly a clear view, but. Alright, oh, the other guy went out just very, 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 very easily by itself almost. So now I'm just disconnecting these guys. Uh, again, I need to kick a little bit on the upper hose to disconnect it. Carefully, uh, carefully with those uh, controllers for the CCM, uh, don't force on them on any point. I just need to drop the camera for now. So actually I suggest leaving the screw here and then disconnect the hoses because when you pull on them the whole heater core comes out. So keep the screw there, disconnect the hoses and then I remove the screw from there. I'm trying to undo the upper. See I will just uh, put a lever but on the plastic side not on the arm. Don't try on the arm. A couple of kicks and it's out and again you see there's really almost nothing leaking from there you see the uh, the hoses are kind of uh, pretty st stiff in there if I look above can I just toss them like that this one moves very easily the other one, much less so. The part that's a little bit uh, stressful is that the, the pipes need now to be bent and moved towards the front of the car. Uh, and then at the end you'll need to pull them from there, bend them back and have them sit about just like now. So try to not to force on them when you press uh, uh, insert them back. So you need to recenter them quite a bit before inserting because if they are just very bent and you still force them to uh, get in, it will crush the uh, o-ring on just one one side and it may start leaking on the other side. So uh, don't be afraid this won't break, but you really need to toss them away. I will just uh, um, this one the the upper one I will just have to pull it from there and toss it to clear the, the uh, arm here. Don't forget to, re uh, to replace the uh, o-rings. They start leaking about uh, 15 years old. They will start leaking. Um, so now let's see how this thing comes out. They uh, remove that screw. Some people would just chop a little bit this lower plastic. We'll just remove that coin corner here. The lower part is not a problem because uh, it won't uh, leak airflow or something. But I won't do it now. I'll just try to see if it goes like this. So uh, you see, the coupler it's really push it upwards. You see, like I said, it still uh, keeps flowing. And yes, I think yeah. I need to cut I need to cut this little piece here. It's about half an inch long and then I'll keep going on. I'll just get a clip or something to remove that small plastic piece from there. Cut with uh, this thing. Uh, I will cut this part here underneath all the way to the front here. So uh, don't be worried again. This is not uh, structural or anything if you think uh, I don't think airflow will, will escape from there I just uh, put some foam up to us if you need the, the bottom is gone now I chopped from end to end here uh, so now uh, 
if you think it's uh, air will blow from there just insert a little bit piece of foam so let's just try to pull it from there it clears up here pretty uh, very very close it's really one millimeter stuck in there but this should go so you shame on me I just realized something I didn't realize it goes like this so when you disconnect the coupler here funny thing look at this the guys this guy can go up and down like that just pull it it will just move just crazy so you just have to toast this thing before you remove the heater core toast it like that fully toss it upwards and you'll probably have much more space than I had so it's gonna be much easier yeah, this is nice. Again, uh, before chopping the plastic here at the bottom, try to see if the coupler, when you swing the coupler, it will clear enough. So you don't need to break that plastic here. With the heater core removed, we can see about how it works uh, for uh, the temperature control. So you see the flaps the one with uh, the ones with the uh, uh, white edge there's two of them one for each passenger in the rear in the towards the front of the car and two towards the rear of the car so actually these flaps control the air that goes through the heater core which is the hot air and just above it's sealed it's not the same air passage it's just above uh, it's the air for the uh, uh, air conditioning so the cold air so it's a different passage this is for the hot air on the top uh, it's for the air conditioning at this moment uh, you see the flaps are closed for the uh, hot air so because that's because at this point the setting for each passenger is uh, the coolest so I will just move it to warm it up a little bit and as I move that's interesting because the flaps don't move that might be the temperature sensor inside the cabin I guess so now it's just the driver if I can grab the I'm sure I can get it oh, that's the passenger you should, should see it move probably the uh, the temperature sensor also works with it and uh, let's see again this so at this point it's uh it's fully open it's fully hot and you see that's the uh, uh i believe the evaporator from the air conditioning i think it's the evaporator units inside the car uh, and that's you just can see the uh, ducts for the airflow but for the cold air which go above and now if you go to the to the hottest setting right now it's that the air coming from the blower passes always by the air conditioning and gets inside the heater core uh, and gets into the cabin if you go to uh, to the cold air the air won't pass anymore by the heater core it passes just by the uh, the condenser yeah I think it's a condenser and uh, it goes inside the cabin by the cold air and then there are the other uh, motors for the uh, uh, directing the air but that's on the other completely the the other end you don't see any flaps moving here with a new heater core in place I suggest just pressing down the uh, first upper pipe leave the uh, other one out and insert the clip to the upper one from the right side as you look at it and once that clip inserted insert 
this lower pipe as well and place its, its clip from the left side it's the opposite side uh, as it was in the original configuration so just insert it from the left yeah, make sure to insert them fully and when you insert the clip it's better to keep pressing with a with one hand on the pipe and inserting it because it needs to be really seated here make sure, make sure the, uh, the tip of the uh, the tip of the uh, pin doesn't touch the control the, the arm from the flap you know see how it's moving just double check because sometimes you may push it too far on one side so make sure it clears the arm if uh, if the clip doesn't go in uh, very easily on the side it should go very very easily just like that i'm just pushing it a little bit sorry by my hand if it doesn't go like this it's because the o-ring the seal is not seated properly inside so just grab a small hammer and tap gently gently right it's plastic until you you should have been seeing the o-ring any long so tap it until it goes in there uh, before inserting the clips uh, back in place make sure they are really really straight flat like this both legs are parallel but should be flat so that's how it was uh, when Volvo put them back in place if they are not flat they won't get in there you will force and then they won't pass don't so uh, when the pipe is properly seated you don't see the rubber anymore and the clip it's really straight and flat it should go very easily in there pretty much like this maybe a little bit more but you see how easy it goes um, be careful a little bit with this uh, coupler here with the screw uh, the way it goes, the screw goes just on top of this thing it's a, like a groove so uh, make sure you push this road all the way back here to make place for the bolt you see the bolt can rotate just a little bit, not fully make sure you push all the way that thing uh, back again uh, care when uh, Placing uh, the uh, steering uh, column shaft bolt in place. Uh, keep it with the with the nut at the lower side towards the floor. So as if it breaks, uh, you will still have the the bolt hanging in place. Um, as for the torque, uh, this is called. Um, let me see. It's called a lower steering column sh uh, shaft wing screw you'll notice it's like has like wings uh, and the torque it's 30 newton meters which is about 22 uh, pounds feet force um, if you are not sure maybe just pass by volvo and ask them to check it uh, they should uh, do it uh, in a second uh, it's really a safe bolt it's very important don't don't under tighten and don't over tighten if you over tighten it there's like two ears here which are, will approach and you will keep tightening the bolt too much um, this is uh, i think the the main reason why it's a special bolt is that in case of a crash major crash and the floor coming towards the the, the steering column this bolt will shear off and will allow uh, not the steering, uh, the steering wheel not to come uh, towards the driver so again really uh, take care of this bolt and be careful because it's a safe uh, safety thing uh, to refill the coolant back in place so close the uh, the drain i did refill uh, this tank uh, it's about one and a half liters and it won't go more so I will just start the car and right afterwards the water pump is going to fill the heater core so I need to fill coolant right afterwards. Okay. So I'm having an 
high on the level, level here, level. You see, I jump started uh, on the front. That's the uh, flat one. It has a uh, sign there, and then I was trying to plug it on this bolt but it didn't work because there's a rubber over it so I just connected the negative one on that piece so you see the level already dropped here so I will refill it right away this is my original coolant I uh, recovered it Let me just undo the ca those cables. And now I will just let the car idle for a while. Hopefully, uh, it was inside the garage, so it's gonna warm up pretty fast. And when it's uh, warming up, the engine will open the thermostat here, and at that very moment, the fluid will drop here, will empty. So I really need to keep the car parked, maybe rev it a little bit and check inside, check inside the car on the display when it says coolant low level or just sit here and look at it uh, but don't uh, let the engine run when it's, it, it drops here so don't drive the car by, car by, by all means uh, check an eye on it as soon right when it's dropping here just refill it um, and by the way it's a good thing to check the thermostats on this vehicle it sits there a very very easy way to check it they thought almost all the time after 10 years about they will fail open in an open position means the fluid uh, even with the cold engine the fluid will circulate here inside this part so the very easy way to test is just with the cold engine start the engine let it idle for one minute and touch the holes maybe not too close just here if you feel it's warm it means the stuff is stuck open, fluid is coming here, and you need to replace the thermostat. So this is very easy check. You can really not the, not just slightly, slightly, slightly warm. It's normal, but if you feel here, it's warm in mid. There's coolant flowing, and it should be flowing because the engine is still cold. So then you replace the thermostat. It's a very easy check. So um, like I said, I will let it uh, idle like this until the thermostat opens I will refill here you just uh, put it to the max mark and then you place the cap on and then you drive the car uh, it doesn't matter you keep an eye on the display uh, just get coolant with your, inside the car somewhere in a, in, a, uh, in a bottle or something if you drive the car you are just out in a city baby um, if you leave the car in the parking for a couple of minutes, 5-10 minutes, it is possible that the, the fluid level will drop inside the, uh, the uh, reservoir. So actually the car doesn't need to cool down completely. So just be aware of it, uh, aware of this, uh, so uh, you have some coolant with you and if you just park the car for a couple of time, uh, just uh, open the hood and uh, check the level uh, to be sure you should be getting a, a message on the display but uh, just to be safe just check it visually and then drive the car and when you stop the car you let it rest overnight the engine will pull down and at that moment again the lever here will drop so the next morning open the cup and refill as needed and from that moment on should be fine but keep an eye on the display it says if it says uh, pull and never low and if you drive the car just keep a bottle of coolant uh, with you let me drive the car don't, for don't forget the cup and uh, make sure it's tight every time you drive it otherwise it will flow out finally don't forget to check the brake pedal depress it see if, if the lights goes off and uh, check the uh, check the the uh, heater core for leaking once it's filled up and check it after one day maybe two